Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. It's time for Field Day 2018. I'm here on the Friday, I'm about to set my station up. Weather forecast actually calls for rain. Uh, starting later today and uh, quite a bit through Saturday and even into Sunday, the temperatures are cooler than I anticipated. Having said that, I brought along the right gear to ensure that I don't get washed out uh, and I'm going to be warm enough so that's not an issue either. I thought it might be interesting for me just to take you on a little tour of the campsite and help you understand what I do in order to determine what spots will be good on the campsite for the various things that I need to set up. Let's take a look. Okay, I'm switching to handheld mode here. I'm going to be very slow and deliberate because nothing uh, upsets me more from, uh, uh, from a physical perspective than trying to watch video that is herky-jerky and moving all around. I tend to get motion sick and so I'm uh, a little bit sensitive to the fact that other people may feel the same. So the first thing I want to do, I've got a couple things I've got to set up here, actually three different things I've got to pay attention to when I set up my camp. Uh, the first one is my sleeping tent. I want to make sure it's on a flat level piece of ground that's up a little bit higher than the rest so water doesn't pool underneath it if it does start to rain. Uh, the second thing is I've got my shelter. Uh, this year I'm using uh, a Eureka No Bug Zone shelter. I'll be telling you a little bit more about that in the video as we progress. And the final thing to be set up is my, uh, is my 50 foot a DX wire telescopic mast that I'm going to uh, be erecting to keep my vertical up and, uh, and, and performing well throughout the contest. Uh, so I've got three different things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for that ideal spot for the sleeping tent and I will tell you, so I've, I guess I've cheated a little bit in that I was here in April in very wintry conditions, this very campsite, and so I know the best place uh, for the tent is just going to be over here. Uh, mostly flat, up and in the clear, uh, water is not going to pool here. Um, now I'm going to want the no bug zone uh, shelter a little bit close, but not too close. Um, and one of the other things, that, by the way, we're going to have to watch out for is the fire pit. So the fire pit is over here, and one of the things to bear in mind is the sparks from the fire. You know, if you've got an expensive tent, and mine may not be the most expensive out there, but uh, I paid uh, what I consider to be a good amount of money for it. I don't want to get it damaged by sparks. I want to have the tent far enough away from the fire pit that uh, sparks won't damage the fly. You're going to hear some background noise. Uh, there's some school kids uh, out at the campgrounds here today. Uh, they're making quite a bit of noise. Hopefully I'm audible over them. Uh, so, so I don't want to be too close to the fire pit. And um, if I have my sleeping tent set up over here, uh, I think what I want to do now is take a look at where I'm going to set up my vertical. I'm, I'm going to be using the uh, DX wire mast um, as a vertical. And I, what I want to do is I'm just going to uh, scan up a little bit here and we'll take a look at the canopy. And what I want to do is I want to set it up in a place where I can come through the trees. Uh, and let me see, I think that's probably it right there. Uh, which means that I'll just uh, sort of walk underneath where this is. And then looking back down, I'm thinking this is a pretty good place for the vertical. And... Uh, sleeping tent is going to be over there. Now because the vertical is going to be right here, uh, that means I can put the shelter very close by here somewhere. I don't want to get it over too close. You can see we've got uh, a pathway with people walking through it. I don't want to be too close to the action over there. So I'm going to be uh, in a little bit here and maybe put the shelter just out here. One of the other considerations, if there's going to be a lot of rain, it'd be kind of nice to put the shelter under the cover of some of the leaves. And so now I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking through this and I'm thinking maybe I'll put the, uh, the shelter just over here um, with the sleeping tent just uh, on the other side of it there. Uh, so that, I, th I think that's going to work out fine. Taking a look again at the fire pit, I think I'm far enough away from the fire pit, I'm not going to have to worry about sparks. This is the thought process that I put into it and uh, now that I've figured out all the work that I have to do, I guess I'm going to go do some work and I'll come back to you. When operating HF Portable for a contest, I find that setting simple goals gives the event some personal meaning. 
and helps keep me motivated. As you might expect, my primary goal is to set up an effective station that will allow me to make contacts without too much difficulty. I can achieve this by putting up a good wire antenna as high as I can get it. The next goal is to be fully prepared for whatever Mother Nature decides to throw at me over the next two days. The past couple of years I have used tarps for a shelter. I'm going to change that tactic and will instead use this, a Eureka no bug zone. This shelter has a tarp top cover with attached mesh walls that extend down to ground level. The no bug zone comes in this compact bag and weighs only five and a half pounds. To support the no bug zone, you will need either two eight foot poles or two trees to anchor the ridge line. For this event, I will deploy it with these four foot stackable military fiberglass poles. As a testimonial, I used the no bug zone last month on a camping trip up north, and it was a godsend. My brother, nephew, and I had a campsite that was populated with thousands of swarming flies. Once we had set up the no bug zone, we were able to step into the shelter and leave the buzzing hordes behind. The no bug zone's effectiveness saved the trip for us. I'm not expecting the same buggy conditions here, but this shelter is very good at keeping rain out and will also provide relief from the beating sun. Internal dimensions of the no bug zone is 8 feet by 8 feet, so it's more than large enough for an operating table and chairs. I'll set it up and then let you take a closer look. Okay, the no bug zone has been set up. So I've got my military masts stacked. Uh, there's two four foot masts stacked on either side of the ridge line. Um, and I've also pegged it out. It's, it's kind of breezy out here today and uh, I want to be very sure that the Shelter is rigid and uh, not going to go anywhere if uh, the wind really starts to pick up and the weather turns nasty on us. Uh, I've got it pegged out at the bottom too to provide some additional space. One thing I have noticed is that the soil is very hard, very hard, uh, dried up. Uh, I've needed to use a hammer to put the, uh, the, the spikes in, the, the tent pegs. Uh, make sure that you use a hammer or that you bring one on your field deployments, even if just a small one. It'll, uh, it'll give you a lot of uh, utility in certain situations, as I've just found. Okay, there are two zippered doors on either side of the new no bug zone. And uh, as you can see, plenty of room inside for a table. Uh, kind of nice on a sweltering day, the, the mesh will let uh, the cool breeze through. Um, I'm not going to have to worry about sweltering days, I don't think, this weekend. But uh, I'm, I'm very curious, actually, to see how it's going to stand up to rain. If we do get rain, is the rain going to make it through the mesh? Is it not? Uh, if, it, if it turns out that it's not really suitable for rain, uh, and I'm led to believe that it is, it should be okay in the rain and no water is going to get through. Um, but, but if for whatever reason it, it turns out not to be suitable, I've also brought along a tarp that I can deploy. I'll pull down the no bug zone and switch over to a tarp. Okay. Let's focus our attention on the antenna. In the past I've used slopers and horizontal antennas for field day. This time around I've decided to try a full length vertical in hopes of extending my reach to the west coast and who knows, maybe get Hawaii or Alaska into the log. I'll be using the high end fed ultralight mini in a vertical orientation. The ultralight mini is an end fed antenna which is 66 feet long. This antenna covers 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters without the need of a tuner. I will fasten the far end of the radiator to the tip of my DX wire 50 foot tall fiberglass telescopic mast, then run the radiator straight down the pole. Since the antenna is 66 feet long and the pole is 50 feet tall, I will need to pull the bottom 20 feet or so of the radiator away from the pole. I know some of you will be asking why in God's name would I want to operate with such a tall vertical when I could use a shorter, more conventional multi-band vertical. The short answer is that a full-size vertical should perform better due to a lack of coils and traps while much of the antenna is higher off the ground plus I don't need to worry about laying down a bed of ground radials. 
Ground radials make for more time spent in setup. They also require a fair sized area to extend the radials in all directions. The campsite I have here does not give me enough room for an effective set of ground radials. Traditional commercial multi-band verticals can also be finicky to set up. Each installation location may require careful tweaking to ensure a proper impedance match on all bands. Saturday morning. So later on, after I got the station set up, it started to rain. And it kept on raining. And it's been raining pretty much constantly since then. But everything set up and was set up mostly uh, in decent weather uh, when I was erecting the 50-foot DX wire mast um, it was raining so but nonetheless the, the mast went up and, uh, and and survived through the night uh, the no bug zone shelter uh, as you might be able to see from all the guy lines is securely tied down I'm gonna have to retighten some of them this morning uh, had a good night's sleep uh, listened to a football game from out west since I was pretty much too tired to do anything else uh, had some friends drop by actually uh, last night it was kind of nice for a visit I was hoping to get on for some QRP night <clears throat> activity last night, but uh, with the arrival of the friends, friends come first, so we had a nice visit and, uh, and then uh, off to bed. So, time for some breakfast. Okay, while I'm waiting for the water to boil and uh, get some breakfast going, I thought I'd show you the antenna. So it is um, my 50-foot DX wire telescopic fiberglass mast. Um, all the way to the top, uh, I have the end of my high-end fed ultra mini um, four-band, 40 meter, uh, 20 meter, 15 meter, 10 meter, and uh, I just run it straight down the pole. And I'm just going to walk in a little bit closer here. And at about the 8 foot level, I've brought the wire away over to the shelter, keeping it up off the ground where people won't trip on it. Also up a tiny bit higher, just to hopefully radiate a little bit more signal. Because there's a little bit more excess, it's a 66 foot wire, um, I've just run it across the top of the shelter to the far military pole on the other side, which is acting as a support for the shelter. Uh, now let's walk around that side. I have to be cautious of the guy lines here. Did a little bit of tripping over them last night in the dark. By the way, last night uh, had three, at least three visitors. Um, had uh, uh, a raccoon, actually a raccoon, looked like a family of raccoons uh, before I went to bed, uh, and a skunk. I'm happy with the report that the skunk didn't stay long and there were no altercations. Uh, and finally we had fireflies, which was kind of cool. When I say we, I mean me. I was the only one around to witness them. Um, so there's the, uh, there's the wire coming up to the top of the pole. And then I've just got the coax coming straight down. I'm not going to use this entrance to the shelter um, for... Uh, for access, I want to make sure the coax doesn't get stepped on or tripped over, that sort of thing. That's a key part of setting up for a portable operation is making sure that your coax stays, uh, stays out of harm's way. Taking a little bit slow with the camera here, I don't want to uh, trip over any guy lines. There's the matching unit for the high-end fed. Uh, and, uh, and then down over to the operating position. Breakfast. 
can't get much more Canadian than oatmeal with maple syrup and raisins. Ooh. Carrying spares when operating HF Portable is essential. I have spare batteries, a spare rig, spare power cords, spare antennas, spare coaxial cables, and a spare telescopic fiberglass pole. On the topic of coax cables, I use RG8X. Last year I brought along a length of RG8U, but quickly found it to be unsuitable due to its relative inflexibility compared to RG8X. I won't be bringing RG8U along for portable operation again. Now on to the operating position. I have brought along both my Yesu FT817ND and my FT897D. I will operate using each of them this year, swapping back and forth as I see fit. When I do operate using the 897, I will use it at either the 5 watt or 20 watt level. The high end fed ultralight mini does not require a tuner from 40 meters to 10 meters but I have brought my Yesu FC707 tuner in case I want to use another antenna later in the contest. I have plenty of SLA batteries with which to power my station. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mexico. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mexico. Copy, please copy, 1 Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha. Uh, QSL, K1 Alpha, radio, QRZ. 61, India, India. 7 Alpha, India, India. Uh, India. Uh, Thank you very much, 1 Delta, Western New York, QRZ, in 5RP. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. Tango. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. Roger, 1 Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha. 1 Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha, thank you very much. QRZ, November 5, Radio Papa. Here in Illinois. QRZ Field Day, send 2BJ. QRZ Field Day, from N2BJ. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, you 2 Delta, Illinois. Roger, please copy 1 Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha. Got it. QRZ at N2BJ Field Day. Roger on the 2 Alpha, South Carolina, 7 threes and good luck. This is Whiskey 1, America, Quebec, QRZ. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. I've got a Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike, QSL. Roger, Roger, 1 Bravo, Golf Tango, Alpha. Roger on your one Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha. We are one Echo, Rhode Island. One Echo, Rhode Island. Yourself? Roger, Roger. Thank you and good luck. Seven threes and good luck. This is Whiskey One America, Quebec. Field day. Sunday morning, and uh, it's still raining. It's been raining on and off all weekend, uh, mostly on. Uh, there was a bit of a break last night. Uh, you know what? And for me, field day has been many things over the years. Uh, I used to get really intense about field day in the past you know and I, I, I waited all year long and I would get very excited and I just wanted to do nothing but stay on the radio the entire time and make as many contacts as I possibly could uh, you know what things have changed a little bit for me uh, last night uh, friends dropped by and uh, they wanted to sit around the campfire and have some dinner. So I shut down the station. I was perfectly happy in doing so. And, and for me, that's right. You know, I, that, that's my priorities these days. You know, your friends come first and, uh, and stuff like field day, while important, uh, that's okay. It, it provided the backdrop for a really nice get together. Uh, as far as contacts go, because I took some time out yesterday afternoon when, this, uh, when the rain had stopped, I, I tried to make a couple of other videos that I'll be posting on my channel. Hopefully the, the footage works out for that. Um, so I didn't spend the time completely working field day. I'm currently at 37 contacts. I've made contacts on 40 meters, 20 meters, uh, and 15 meters. There's been nothing on 10. <laughs> Day 
Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, you are uh, 2 Alpha Vermont. Roger, copy 1 Bravo Golf Tango Alpha. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Roger, Roger. Uh, report, please. 1 Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha. QSL, 1 Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha. 1 Delta, Western New York, QSL. QSL, thank you. Thank you, QRZ, WT Papa Japan. Uh, So that ring has a built-in tuner, right? Uh, that is a that is a tuner right there, right? Yeah. So it's not really built in; it's bolted on, right? Right. Because it's sold as an option. Right. This plugs right in. Yeah. Whiskey One Bravo Radio Sierra One Delta Western New York. Nice rig. Yeah, I really like this one. And it does uh, two meters and 442, oh, right? That's handy, yeah. In all bands, it's or in all modes. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Uh, Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, copy 2 Alpha, Mish Mike India. Roger, copy 1 Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha. QSL on the 1 Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha, 33, good luck. Thank you, good luck. QRZ, W8 PIF. This was thinking about the um, uh, November zero kilowatt again. Radio Shack catalogs of our younger uh, years. Remember how we, we, we glorified those things that are like, they're like, they're like icons from a church, you know? Yeah, it's true, Rand. And I just think of now, remember the fuzzy feeling you got thinking back when the teacher, like a handheld or a, a number of different uh, handy talkies. Six channel adventure awaits you, and then it would show a, a drawing of guys hiking up a hill or talking with police or whatever. All those pictures, remember what I was talking about? Like, or, 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 because you like the scanners. Here, police action or fire action, you see firemen like a, like a, 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 a whatever the thing would a montage of police, fire, army, you know, like, like, like you know, and it just yeah. captured the kids' imagination. Absolutely. Eh? And maybe it never was as good as the picture, right? Like the the drawing, but oh, wonderful marketing! I, lo I love those catalogs. <laughs> you know, there's a whole website. I, I I looked over the one night, and remember what was the 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 DX180, which was the god of shortwave radios. It was like 189 dollars. Remember, I often say that was enormous sum when we were 14. Yeah. We'd never yeah. save that much money. I thought it was a lot of money. That that would be like uh, right now, probably 600 bucks. Yeah. And, and, and more and more, yeah, in dollar value. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, good morning to 3 Alpha, Ohio. Roger, copy 1 Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha. Roger, the 1 Dollar Golf Tango uh, Alpha. Somebody three, so good luck, you are that field day for Whiskey Eight, India Dollar. CQ Field Day, CQ Field Day, Whiskey Zero, India Lima, Oscar Field Day. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. November 2, Tango Whiskey Mike, correct me if I'm wrong here. Anyway, we are 3 Alpha November Delta, 3 Alpha North Dakota QSL. Uh, correction of the call sign, Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Okay, I'll get it right now. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Vic, uh, Tango Whiskey Mike, please copy my 3 Alpha North Dakota QSL. Roger, please copy 1 Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha. Uh, 1 Bravo and uh, Golf Tango Alpha QSL. Roger, Roger. Thanks for the uh, contact, 73. Thank you, good luck. You as well, 73. Uh, break, break. One Delta, Mexico, Denmark. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. Roger, copy one Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha. QSL 73, Whiskey 1 Sierra, Yankee Echo, QRZ. 
Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. November, okay. Yeah, the Victor Echo Tango station again, please. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Okay, Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Uh, this is Victor Echo 1, Alpha Oscar, 1 Fox Cross Maritime. Roger, copy one Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha. Okay, we copy one Bravo, uh, Greater Toronto Area. Thanks very much and good luck in the contest. Thank you, good luck. Field Day 2018 has come and gone. Now it's time for me to reflect on the experience and see if I've learned anything from it. For me, Field Day is not just an opportunity to operate HF Portable. It's a chance to get out and hone my skills, learn things so that I can be even more effective in my next HF Portable outing. Here are my takeaways from Field Day 2018. Shelter is always the first priority, so let's start there. As could be expected with its mesh walls, the no-bug zone was not completely waterproof. There was water coming through the mesh and getting onto sections of the table. Maybe 75% of the enclosed area was dry. In addition, the no-bug zone got very dirty from all the mud on the ground. Cleaning up the muddy no-bug zone took me a good amount of time once I got back home. A simple tarp is much easier to clean at the end of a deployment. While the no-bug zone was fast to set up, I might go back to using a large tarp when rain is in the forecast and bugs are not a concern. Upon arriving at the site on Friday, I took some care in deciding where to position the sleeping tent and the no-bug zone shelter. In hindsight, the choices I made were not the best. While the place I used for the MSR Elixir 3 sleeping tent worked well in near freezing temperatures back in April, it was a disaster during the field day weekend. That location had no grass, only hard packed dirt. With all the rain, that spot became a muddy mess which made entering and exiting the tent a tricky proposition. As the rain fell, mud splattered all over the lower half of the tent. In addition, I had positioned the tent and the no bug zone under the cover of trees to help shield them from the rain. Wet debris falling from the trees stuck to the tops of those items and left stains, meaning a lot of scrubbing when I got home. Next time I set up an HF portable station and rain is in the forecast, I will keep the shelters away from the trees. I'll set them up out in the open and on a grass surface. Moving on to the antenna, I was very curious about how the 50 foot tall vertical would work for field day. As mentioned earlier, I was hoping the low angle radiation pattern provided by the vertical would result in greater coverage to the west coast of North America. The vertical did not work out as I might have expected. Before continuing, I'd like to be very clear about one thing. With the high-end fed ultralight mini antenna, I had no issue making contacts with the low power levels I was employing. Yet I did not see the expected increase in long distance contacts to the western states and provinces. In fact, my contact list looked a lot like lists from previous years where I used slopers and inverted V's with a lot of northeastern US stations worked. On the positive side, it was easy and fast to set up. Will I use a vertical again on field day? Truthfully, I'm not sure. For those of you who participated in field day, Thank you for doing what you do and giving everybody else a chance to make contacts with you. For those of you who have not yet tried Field Day, you know what? There's a reason you're watching this video. You have an interest. Maybe next year you can give it a try. I know that some of you out there have physical and other challenges which keep you from getting out into Field Day and you live vicariously these experiences through videos of mine and others like me. And that's terrific, and, and it's a real honor and a pleasure to be able to bring you this stuff. But for the rest of you, start making plans for next year. If you think you can do it, you probably can. Once I was like you, once not very long ago, and I put it all together, and now I'm having a lot of fun with Field Day. You don't have to be with a big group. Being with a big group has its own advantages. And some of you may be able to 
find an easier path into field day doing that. Having said all of that, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I really appreciate all of the comments that I get. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. I really appreciate all of the comments, all of the thumbs up, all of the subscriptions that I get. It keeps me coming back to make more videos. It really fuels my passion. So with that, I pass the ball over to you. Get out of the shack. Get outdoors and get on the air. 73 from Tracy, VE3, TWM.